How did an African tribe describe the properties of a tiny star thousands of years before modern astronomy even confirmed its existence? They said it was a tiny star invisible to the naked eye. Yet they knew of its existence. They knew the exact time it took to orbit its parent star. And they knew that it was a white dwarf star. For context, the star they were describing wasn't officially discovered until 1862, and modern science didn't even know what a white dwarf star was until 1910. This is the extraordinary tale of the Dogon tribe and their unexplainable knowledge of the stars in the night sky. In 1862, American astronomer Alvin Clark noticed a dim tiny speck of light near Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. That dim speck came to be known as Sirius B, an extraordinarily tiny star locked into orbit around Sirius, a star so very tiny and so dim that it wouldn't even be photographed for over another 100 years in 1970. But Clark's telescope had finally caught a peek at it. Clark had finally discovered Sirius B. Or did he? Halfway across the world, in West Africa, in Mali, lives a tribe known as the Dogon. And the Dogon had been speaking about the existence of a tiny invisible star beside Sirius for hundreds, if not thousands of years before Clark's discovery. The Dogon didn't just know that it was there, but the Dogon went as far as to describe the star. They claimed that it could not be seen with the naked eye, that it orbited Sirius A in a 50-year orbit, and that it was a star made of an incredibly heavy and dense substance. And it wasn't until the late 20th century that modern science confirmed all three claims the Dogon had made of Sirius B. How? The Dogon gave eerily specific, accurate details, they called Sirius B Potolo, and they said it orbited Sirius A every 50 years. To this very day, the Dogon hold a sacred ceremony called the Sigui, which is directly tied to the Sirius B's 50-year orbital cycle around Sirius A, and is held once every 60 years. But they explain that it is based on their astronomical knowledge of the 50-year orbit of Sirius B and Dogon elders explained that the 10-year delay was to account for ceremonial timing and calendar factors. Sirius B, the white dwarf we didn't photograph until 1970, really does orbit Sirius A every 50.1 years. It was the exact orbital period already known by the Dogon, long before Western science caught up. Think about that. It wasn't until the late 20th century by precise measurements confirmed Sirius B's orbital period, 50.09 years. A star invisible to the naked eye. So small, so dim, and so dense, that even with today's instruments, it's hard to observe. And yet, somehow, the Dogon got the timing exactly correct. And the Dogon didn't just know how long it orbited. They also claimed that Sirius B, Potolo, was the heaviest star in the sky. That might have sounded like a myth, until modern science proved in the 1920s that they were absolutely right. Sirius B was classified a white dwarf, the collapsed core of a dead star, or in simple terms, the corpse of a dead star. It is almost the size of Earth, but it's nearly as heavy as the Sun. Think about that, a star the size of a planet with the weight of a star. Just one teaspoon of Sirius B would weigh about five tons on Earth. It's one of the densest objects we've ever discovered, second only to things like neutron stars or black holes. And yet, somehow, the Dogon knew. No instruments, no telescopes, just the claim. It is the heaviest thing in the sky, and they were 100% right. How did the Dogon know this? The Dogon say this knowledge was passed down, generation after generation, across centuries. They say this knowledge is both ancient and sacred. According to Dogon tradition, the knowledge came from beings they called the Nomu. 
they described the Nomu as beings who descended from the sky in a spinning ship. And where did the Dogen say the Nomu came from? You guessed it, Sirius. The Nomu, they say, came from Sirius, bringing with them advanced knowledge of the stars, including the existence of Sirius B, its orbits and its properties. To the Dogen, this isn't a myth, it is a memory. History that has been passed down through generations and generations that span thousands of years. Through sacred stories, rituals and ceremonies, they have managed to remember what they regard as their ancestors' true history. Some people argue they picked up this information later, in the 1930s, from French anthropologists. But the Dogen strongly assert their disagreement towards this claim. They assert this knowledge is ancient. They assert that this knowledge was also sacred and that it has been woven into their culture, their rituals, their identity for the last thousands of years. Some point to the ancient astronaut theory. The idea that, long ago, Earth was visited by beings from other worlds. Not as a myth, but as Earth's history. That it had visitors from other worlds thousands of years ago. Visitors who shared their knowledge with those who would listen. So the question is, who do we believe? Whatever the truth is, the Dogen make us ask deeper questions. How much did the ancients really know? What knowledge have we lost, or simply ignored? And are we truly the first to look up and understand the stars? Because the Dogen speak of Sirius not as a discovery, but as a memory. And maybe the argument that the Dogen received this knowledge much later on should be taken into consideration. But the Dogen assert their claim that their knowledge is ancient. And maybe, just maybe, they remember something that we have forgotten. <laughs>